Subway of Ottoville proud to sponsor tonight's state semifinal matchup for Ottoville. Can the Big Green do it again and make it to the state finals under Coach Clayman? Tough test in Berlin Highland. And tonight brought to you by Subway of Ottoville. The Lady Green faithful traveling well and rocking the Schottenstein Center today. Quick start for Ottoville. Alicia Huntingford to CJ Kemper, three to nothing. And it's Brooke Mangus playing on our future campus, driving and scoring five to two. How about Bridget Landon, offensive rebound, two point lead for the Lady Green. And before the end of the quarter, Casey Knippen knocking down a triple, 10 7, Ottoville after one. Second quarter, more of the same. Alexis Turbin makes it 12 to nine, Lady Green. Then a nice inbounds play with a tie game. Makes it 14-12 thanks to C.J. Kemper. Madison Nodell, big three off the bench at 17-12 Ottoville. Then the ball goes right to Amber Miller. She scores 21-18 lead for the Big Green at the half. Third quarter inside to Landon, 23-18. Coach Clayman sees a weakness, does it again. Landon scores, it's a four-point lead. How about some press breaker? Brooke Mangus to Amber Miller. Next time it's Huntingford with a three, 30 to 22 Ottoville. They're not done. Kemper, offensive stick back, 32-22, but a 10-0 Highland run goes into the fourth quarter, ties the game. Landon, backdoor cut, two-point lead for the Lady Green. Then we're tied again, Landon to Miller, it's 36-34. Highland would take a lead, then it would be tied again for Angela Troyer. Two-pointer makes it 41-39 with 33 seconds to go. Landon hits five of her last six free throws, we're tied at 41. Final seconds, kick to the corner in Kennedy Schlebog. Big three, 18 points for her and the Lady Green fall at the buzzer, 44-41, despite 15 points by Bridget Landon. Well, the general comment is, uh, uh, they always, you guys always ask me, hey, what, what's your game plan for tonight? And I always say, score more points than the other team. We didn't do that tonight. They outscored us. Great shot by uh, Kennedy at the end. Uh, great, two really good teams battling it out, and whoever had the ball last possession, it was one of those where they, they won. Big time shot for her. Questions? Just talk about being that last shot and just. Kind of you trying to them. kill me or what? <laughs> Man, I'm not that young. You're going to relive that again? No, that was, uh, they pushed it, drove kick, kicked it to Kennedy, and she was, I don't know how far behind the three point line, but it was a deep three, but we needed to have somebody in her face. We were supposed to have somebody in her face, and we weren't there, so. And she took advantage of it. I don't know what they did at the end. They might have flared screen four or something because they like to do that. Um, I don't know. I have to see that on film. But she 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 let her go, and she nothing but bottom of the net. So that was a big time shot. Bridget, you stepped up, missed a free throw, but made five straight when you needed to. And despite the ending, still in those pressure situations, but just to be able to do that. Um, yeah, it was um, it was tough. It was very exciting though, and I just knew I had to make them to stay in the game. For our team to stay in the game, she wasn't coming out. <laughs> Don't know, I'll tell you that. Was it two great half-court defenses tonight, just banging heads? Stay, yeah, stay heads. you know, because they, you, you look at their scores, <laughs> their first two tournament games, they gave up 12 points and 12 points. And they were scoring like 80-some a game. Uh, we're scoring 60-some. Um, I'll say that we probably saw Overall, uh, rec schedule-wise, had better teams that we played against. Dave would tell you that too. Um, but we had experience playing that, and we we played some really good defense up there. And I know in the regionals, the teams that came in our regionals were score high-scoring teams too, and we held them down. Uh, we just didn't score enough points tonight. We just didn't execute enough. Um, I think stat-wise, uh, the one that jumps out is turnovers for us. We normally don't have that many turnovers, and. They had 13, we had 22. Um, you, you can't give up that many uh, differential in, in the possessions against a good team and uh, expect to overcome it. Hey, we were up 10 points and it just seemed like it, all of a sudden they just switched the momentum on you. In that third point. Well, they made a couple shots, a little slayball girl. She uh, had three threes there and the, when they got down, she hit some big shots, um, you know. I wasn't going to pull it out like Jackson Center did. 
or, uh, against, uh, or Waterford did against Jackson Center, and then Jackson Center came flying back. I'd CJ, what did you make of playing against Highland in the post like that and getting swarmed? Um, I mean, we knew coming in that she was going to be big. I How about them double teaming you, though? Oh, yeah. Um, I knew I had to kick it out and get it back in, make better cuts. I should have rebounded more. That was well, they're, they're all going to beat themselves up. Should have done this and than that. But they, they played hard. What I always said is put it all out on the floor, and if it's not good enough, if, you know, if we lose, we lose. If we win, we win. We're going to be satisfied with that, and you don't necessarily have to be happy about it. But I gave them tonight to mourn and cry about it, and then tomorrow I better see a bunch of happy faces when, when, we're, when we get up in the morning. Bridget and CJ, I know losses this late in the season are always tough. What's the best way to just describe the emotion and the feelings of, I guess, losing a loss, a loss in general? Um, I guess we were just like such a close-knit team that it just hurt us more. We've been playing together since we were um, how little? Fourth grade, so <laughs> yeah. it's just going to be really hard replacing the seniors. They give it so much effort and they work so hard. It's going to be different next year without them. And you look at it, guys. We have eight girls in the senior class. We have 24 kids in the, high, in the senior class at our high school. We have less than 100 kids. And these kids have come through our program. And they've been there forever. Their parents came, grew up in that community. These kids grew up in that community. And we're all homegrown. And, uh, and I'm very proud of that. And not a lot of, not all the teams that are playing in this can say that. And uh, that's why we're such a close-knit group. They're like sisters. And they're like my, well, I'm so old, they could be my granddaughters. But I mean, they're like my daughters. And it, it's really uh, it's really a pleasure to, for them to let us enjoy the ride with them. You guys last, lost last year to Arlington at the buzzer as well. Is there anything different about a season-ending loss at the buzzer when it's just so right there? Can I direct that to each of you? That makes it a lot harder. It just makes you think of the little things that could have made you come out on top that you just didn't do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it doesn't get easy. Um, but, you know, I was saying it's, uh, it's it was so much bringing the, this group down here. And I made a statement in 2013 that I had some good young kids coming up and don't be surprised if we'll be back here. And they they fulfilled that prophecy. And uh, don't count us out for next year and the year after either, because we got some good young kids coming. Our JVs were 21 and one, uh, and, and we got good core. These kids coming back, so we're we're always aiming to come back down here and give it another shot. And then it's like um, seeing it through their eyes again. So, you know, when you take your kids down to Disney World and you see your, and I don't particularly care for Mickey Mouse and those guys, I don't need to see them, but when you're seeing it through their kids' eyes, right? And now I get, I did it again when we took our, my grandkids down there and you just see it through their eyes. I'm seeing the same Mickey Mouse, the same stuff they're doing for 50 years, but I'm seeing it through a new set of eyes and that's what we're doing with this new group down here. It's a new set of eyes seeing, getting down here to state tournament and, and seeing the wonder and the joy and, the pain and the sorrow too, but it's all about life. And, and like I said in 2013, if this is the worst day of our lives, we're living a pretty good life. Coach, first time in Putnam County history that two girls teams from the county made it to Columbus, uh, Ottaville, and Ottawa Glendale, obviously today. What do you make of just the way that the county girls basketball scene has just, I don't know, exploded is the right term, but certainly this year has been remarkable. Yeah, and Columbus Grove has a really good program. And again, Ottawa, Columbus Grove, Ottaville, Kaleida, Fort, all those kids are homegrown. Farming communities, great communities to grow up, uh, great competition. Uh, these girls run around, see them all the time, play against those guys all the time. They hang out. Uh, just very good. And, and Putnam County has been great basketball for, for many, many years. Um, and if you go in the county and tell them it isn't, you better leave pretty soon because <laughs> they won't like it. Thanks once again to Subway of Autoville for bringing us tonight's 
highlights and interviews of the Ottoville Lady Green.